Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Guillaume Lamott. I'm an assistant professor of neurology at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. I want to thank the organizer for the invitation to talk about the management of the motor aspects of multiple system atrophy. I do not have any disclosure related to this talk. Let's review the objective. First, we will review the different motor aspects of multiple system atrophy. Then we will discuss the management of Parkinsonism in multiple system atrophy. Finally, we will discuss the management of ataxia and other motor symptoms in multiple system atrophy. As an introduction, multiple system atrophy or MSA is a sporadic neurodegenerative disorder that is characterized clinically by autonomic failure with motor involvement of predominantly Parkinsonism for MSAP or cerebellar ataxia for MSAC. On pathology, multiple system atrophy is characterized by glial cytoplasmic inclusions composed of aggregated synuclein. So multiple system atrophy is a form of synucleinopathy. Clinically, patients with multiple system atrophy will present with a combination of symptoms such as autonomic dysfunction, symptoms of cerebellar dysfunction, symptoms that reflect involvement of the pyramidal tract and Parkinsonism. The diagnosis of multiple system atrophy requires the presence of motor symptoms, Parkinsonism or ataxia. And some patients with multiple system atrophy will have a combination of both Parkinsonism and ataxia. The diagnostic criteria for multiple system atrophy were revised in 2008 in the second consensus conference. They are widely accepted and widely used in clinical practice. These criteria uh, were revised recently and the revised criteria will actually should be published very soon. We distinguish two subtypes of multiple system atrophy based on the predominant motor feature. If the predominant motor feature is, is Parkinsonism, we talk about multiple system atrophy type P or MSAP. If the predominant motor feature is cerebellar ataxia, then we talk about multiple system atrophy type C or MSAC. In patients with pure autonomic failure, the presence of subtle motor symptoms of Parkinsonism and or ataxia, or cerebellar ataxia, may actually predict the risk of future phenoconversion to multiple system atrophy. Although Parkinsonism and ataxia are the two main motor manifestations of multiple system atrophy, patients with MSA can present with other motor symptoms, such as myoclonus, which are brief jerky movements, dystonia, defined as sustained motor contraction, or manifestation of pyramidal tract involvement with brisk reflexes or stiffness or spasticity. In multiple system atrophy, autonomic symptoms such as sexual dysfunction with erectile dysfunction, urinary dysfunction with urinary incontinence or urinary retention, orthostatic hypotension, or other non-motor symptoms such as dream enactment behavior, which is characteristic of REM sleep behavior disorder, can precede the onset of motor symptoms, Parkinsonism and or ataxia by many years. The motor symptoms in multiple system atrophy lead to progressive disability and loss of dependence. It can lead to loss of mobility, falls, and the patient may require a gait head 
such as a cane, walker, or wheelchair. Parkinsonism and cerebellar dysfunction in multiple system atrophy also lead to other complications such as dysarthria, which would impact the communication between the patient and other people, such as the caregiver, but also dysphagia, which can lead to complication such as aspiration pneumonia. Dysphagia equal issues with swallowing. Studies have shown that the median survival time from onset of motor symptoms to death is approximately 8.5 to 9 years. However, I want to point out that the presentation and the evolution of MSA is extremely viable and each patient is different. So now let's talk about Parkinsonism in multiple system atrophy. It is the most common presenting motor feature of MSA. Parkinsonism is defined by the combination of bradykinesia, which is a mandatory feature, rigidity, tremor, postural, and gait impairment. Bradykinesia is slowness of movement. And the bradykinesia and rigidity in multiple system atrophy is often symmetrical, which is different from Parkinson's disease, where it's often asymmetrical. The tremor in multiple system atrophy is also different from the classic resting pill rolling tremor that we see in Parkinson's disease. In multiple system atrophy, the tremor is usually more jerky and it is usually more of a postural tremor, meaning that you can see the tremor when the patient maintains the posture against gravity. Imbalance and loss of postural reflexes can lead to faults, which is very common even early in the disease stage in uh, multiple system atrophy. Parkinsonism can also lead to speech disturbances with dysarthria or slurred speech, which can make communication difficult. And also it can impair swallowing function, which is dysphagia which can lead to aspiration pneumonia. So how do we treat Parkinsonism in multiple system atrophy? If the symptoms are minimal or not bothersome to the patient, one option is not to treat. If the symptoms become noticeable to the patient, bothersome to the patient, then the best treatment is to use carbidopa levodopa or Cinemet. Parkinsonism in multiple system atrophy is secondary to dopamine loss in specific parts of the brain, specifically the basal ganglia. So by providing dopamine with carbidopa, levodopa, the aim, the goal is really to improve the movements and the Parkinsonism. Approximately 40 to 50% of patients with MSAP will have improvement in their symptoms with carbidopa levodopa. Carbidopa levodopa will improve the Parkinsonism, but not usually not other symptoms. It is also extremely important for the clinician to look at the medication list and to discontinue any medication that could be deleterious for the movements. We usually look for dopamine blockers the take home message here is that a trial of carbidopa levodopa or Cinemet is often warranted in patients with MSA type P. So now let's talk about tips and pearls about levodopa treatment in MSA. Specific to MSA, low dose of levodopa can cause abnormal movement of the face such as dyskinesias or sustained muscle contraction, which is dystonia of the face and neck. It is important to tell the patient to take levodopa on an empty stomach to avoid interaction with a protein from the food. I usually start with Cinemet 
IR, which is immediate release, 25100, which is the regular uh, dose that we use. We can start at one tablet three times a day. Sometimes we start lower at 0.5 tabs three times a day. And we increase the dose by 0.5 tabs slowly, for example, on a weekly basis. We can even go slower uh, depending on the patient preference. It is important to give it a good trial. So to increase the dose up to 900 milligram daily if needed and if the patient can tolerate. It is also important to use the lowest efficacious dose to avoid side effect. Levodopa can decrease the blood pressure. So the clinician will have to monitor the blood pressure when we initiate levodopa in a patient with MSA or when we increase the dose of levodopa in a patient with MSC. It is unclear if cabidopa, levodopa, or cinemet actually worsen the orthostatic hypertension or worsen the am amplitude of the drop of blood pressure from supine to standing. And future research should look uh, at that uh, question. If needed, we can always prescribe another medication to raise the blood pressure and to prevent excessive drop of blood pressure with the standing position. Such medication include mitodrine, for example. Improvement with cabidopa lipodopa can last three to four years and even sometimes much longer in some patients. The clinical improvement can be subjective when the patient tells us, you know, I'm feeling better on cabidopa lipodopa. And we can also use objective measures when we do the physical examination, and we can also use the UMSAR scale, which is a validated scale that we use in patients with multiple system atrophy. Common side effects of cabidopa levodopa or cinemet include dizziness, fatigue, nausea, which can be also part of multiple system atrophy. So we can worsen some of these symptoms with the treatment. So we always have to look for side effects not only the lowering blood pressure effect, but other side effects of cabidopa levodopa. Importantly, abrupt discontinuation of the treatment can lead to severe worsening of motor symptoms in MSA. So we should always be very cautious when we want to stop cabidopa levodopa. And if we don't have to stop it, we should continue it. And if we have to stop it for whatever reason, we should go very slow if possible. So now I want to show you two videos. The first video was actually a video from Professor Gregor Wenning, and it illustrates a facial dystonia in two patients with multiple system atrophy type P. So I want to play the first segment, and you will see uh, the face of a patient with uh, MSA type P and he's talking to the camera. And if you focus on the left side of his face, you can see that there is progressive eye closure and also pulling of uh, the left side of his mouth to the left. And really you can appreciate the contractions of the muscle on the left side of his face. So this is what we call dystonia. He touches his face with his left hand and kind of the contraction gets better. That's kind of a sensory trick in dystonia. In the second segment, you have a patient with MSA type P who is doing repetitive movement with finger tapping. You have low amplitude uh, of finger tapping which is, and slowness of movement characteristic of Parkinsonism. But you also have abnormal muscle contraction of the muscles of the neck and the lower face. Uh, so the patients are face dystonia and also cervical dystonia. The second video that I want to show you is a video from Skidmore and colleagues. And I got these videos from the Movement Disorder Society uh, library. Uh, and the second video shows a patient with uh, MSA 
type P, so I must say Parkinsonism. So you can see uh, the Parkinsonism with the very low amplitude and decreased uh, speed on finger tapping on the right and finger tapping on the left. You can also see a slowness of movement with hand opening. But if you look at the posture, you have a leaning posture, which is uh, camp called chemtochormia, which can be seen in patients with MSA type P. It's abnormal posture with severe uh, kind of leaning forward type of posture. So what are the other treatments that we can use to, for Parkinsonism in multiple system atrophy? So let's first talk about medications. So there is a class of medication that uh, it's called dopamine agonists. They will uh, bind to dopamine receptors and have uh, a similar effect, uh, at least the similar target than levodopa. Uh, but really dopamine agonists, when we compare them to levodopa, they are uh, the, they provide less benefits and they have way more side effects, including you know, worsening dizziness, fatigue, worsening autostatic hypertension, and the patient can also develop impulse control disorder. So in my view, the dopamine agonists are unlikely to be helpful in a patient with MSA who did not respond to levodopa. However, they are worth a trial if in race selected uh, patients who cannot tolerate levodopa uh, for whatever reasons. Now let's talk about amantadine. So amantadine has been studied in multiple system atrophy uh, to treat the Parkinsonism. Uh, they use doses up to 300 milligram daily. However, it was found to be no more effective than levodopa. And there is a risk of side effect with amantadine, including uh, cognitive impairment, uh, confusion, hallucinations, uh, but also worsening balance and a sedative effect. Beta blockers uh, could be used uh, to treat the postural tremor in some patients with multiple system atrophy. However, I have to mention that the postural tremor is rarely bothersome for the patients and it's rarely the therapeutic target. And so I've not really used beta blocker uh, for that indication in patients with multiple system atrophy. I want to emphasize the role of physical therapy. Uh, they play a very important role for fall prevention, to maintain mobility, but also they're, they're going to provide guidance uh, regarding walking heads, such as a cane, a walker, or a wheelchair. Occupational therapy they will provide different strategies to the patient in order to maintain independence in different activities of daily living. So they also play a very important role. Now let's talk about the second most common manifestation of multiple system atrophy, which is cerebellar ataxia. So cerebellar ataxia is uh, secondary to dysfunction of the cerebellum, which is the part of the brain at the base of the brain that is involved in equilibrium. Clinically, it manifests uh, with a wide base gait with uncoordinated limb movement, which can sometimes looks like clumsiness, with a very specific type of tremor. Uh, it's the, we can see a tremor when the patient reaches from something, it's called an action tremor or a kinetic tremor and also with abnormal eye movements, which are spontaneously, uh, spontaneous abnormal eye movements called nystagmus, uh, which can be seen in different positions. Unfortunately, cerebellar ataxia does not benefit from medications. There is no approved medication to treat cerebellar ataxia. It is extremely important, again, to look at the medication list and to avoid daytime sedating drugs or any type of medication that could worsen the balance or the gait. Physical therapy here uh, is key. Uh, they play again a very important role to prevent falls and to maintain mobility. 
And again, they can give advice or guidance regarding the type of walking aid that's adapted to the patient and the situation. Cane, walker, wheelchair, if necessary. Occupational therapy, again, can play a, a very important role here because they will, again, provide strategies to maintain independence for different activities of daily livings. There are a few drugs that have been uh, studied for cerebellar ataxia. I want to mention some of them because you may hear about them. Uh, we don't necessarily use them in clinical practice. Uh, one of them is acetyl DL leucine. So there was a small study uh, that included patients with different forms of uh, degenerative uh, cerebellar ataxia. They included two patients with uh, MSA type C. And with that treatment, they found that it improved some uh, markers or some measures of gait performance. However, if you look at the actual data, uh, the benefit for, for the two patients with uh, MSA type C was uh, minimal, uh, extremely minimal, and probably not clinically significant. Gabapentin uh, has also been studied uh, to treat cerebellar ataxia in two patients with multiple system atrophy. There is a report out there, and uh, it shows uh, potentially some improvement uh, in the ataxia, in the abnormal eye movements, and in the slurred speech or dysarthria. However, gabapentin can also have uh, uh, side effects such as worsening balance, uh, sleepiness, uh, confusion, uh, cognitive slowing, uh, so it has to be used with, with caution. Aminopyridine uh, has also been studied uh, in cerebellar ataxia and has really not shown any significant benefit uh, in multiple system atrophy. So now let's talk about uh, the other motor manifestations of multiple system atrophy and what is the practical management of, of these symptoms. I want to talk about anticholis uh, in MSA. So anticholis is defined by an abnormal neck flexion, uh, as you can see uh, on, the, on, on, the, on the picture here. So you have an anterior neck flexion with the sheen that's very close to the chest. Uh, we usually see that uh, relatively later in the course of the disease and uh, the prevalence of anticholis in multiple system atrophy has been estimated between 10 and 25% of patients. It is very challenging to treat, and uh, we usually refer this patient to physical therapy. Uh, they can do specific types of exercise uh, to maybe correct the position or at least limit the pain that can be associated with the position. Some patients report a response to levodopa, although most, the majority of patients do not re uh, report a significant improvement of the anticholis with levodopa. And finally, botulinum toxin uh, has been tried with very limited success because the muscle that you would need to inject uh, to help that uh, dystonia or to help that forced uh, neck flexion uh, can actually worsen the swallowing and cause worsening dysphagia. Let's talk now about dystonia in multiple system atrophy. So dystonia is defined by uh, involuntary sustained muscle contractions. It can affect different parts of the body in multiple system atrophy, uh, it often affect the neck. Uh, it's called cervical dystonia. And uh, you may have heard of torticolis, for example, which is a type of cervical dystonia. It can also affect the limb, uh, the foot. Here you can see uh, kind of an inversion of uh, the uh, right foot, uh, which is a common form of dystonia that we also see in patients with MSA and can affect the ends with the flexion of the finger or flexion of the wrist, which is one of the most common type of dystonia also. Uh, so dystonia is frequent uh, in patients with multiple system atrophy type P or MSAP. Uh, unfortunately, it rarely responds to levodopa, at least not as much as the other, uh, uh, as the Parkinsonism, bradykinesia, rigidity, uh, etc. Uh, it usually does not necessarily respond to anticholinergic, uh, or at least the dose that we would need to use usually cause side effects such as uh, sleepiness, um, worsening balance, falls. 
and uh, focal or segmental uh, cervical dystonia may be uh, helped by botulinum toxin injections. Uh, so that can be extremely helpful. Unfortunately, you know, it requires repeated injection because the effect of botulinum toxin only lasts about three months. So we would have to repeat injections uh, approximately every three months, sometimes a little bit uh, more spaced, but usually every three months. Now let's talk about myoclonus in multiple system atrophy. So myoclonus is defined by very brief uh, shock-like uh, jerky movements that are caused by muscular contractions or, or inhibitions. Uh, it's rarely bothersome to the point that it requires treatment uh, in patients with MSA. There are few case reports in the literature uh, of a benefit of drugs such as Kepra uh, or Leviteracetam. Uh, clonazepam or benzodiazepine can also uh, be beneficial. However, uh, again, we really have to be careful about the side effect of benzodiazepine. Uh, with sedation and uh, worsening gait and balance in patients with multiple system atrophy. Now, uh, let's finish with the dysarthria and dysphagia. So dysarthria is defined by slurred speech in multiple system atrophy it has kind of a different characteristics or multiple components. One is hypokinetic, which is a slow slowness in the speech, uh, characteristic of the Parkinsonism. The ataxic, which is an irregular uh, speech, uh, kind of uh, characteristic of the cerebellar ataxia. And the spastic component, uh, which is kind of a strained uh, component, a strained characteristic of the voice, characteristic of the pyramidal uh, involvement. We do not have any medication to treat dysarthria in multiple system atrophy. And uh, the best treatment is speech therapy, uh, which can be helpful to uh, provide the patient with different strategies that they can use or exercise that they can use to improve uh, the, the speech. But also they can assist with identifying the uh, different communication devices um, that may be the best for some patient. Finally, uh, as a complication of Parkinsonism and cerebellar ataxia, uh, it can impact the muscle that controls swallowing and lead to dysphagia, which is impaired swallowing. Uh, and again, here, speech and swallow therapy uh, is extremely important. First, they are gonna identify the type of dysphagia and they can provide, uh, provide treatment recommendations, for example. Uh, they can recommend a change in the consistency of the diet or texture of the diet. They can recommend change in, in, in the consistency of the liquids. Uh, and they can also sometimes recommend more invasive uh, procedures such as a, a gastric tube or PEG-G tube. Spasticity uh, is defined by an abnormal increase in muscle tone and it will cause uh, stiffness, uh, sometimes, which can sometimes be, be painful. Uh, the increased tone can also cause abnormal uh, uh, posture, which can be fixed. For example, some patients will have closure of their, of their hand, which cannot be opened, which can be an issue with hygiene. So spasticity or increased tone, uh, uh, secondary to involvement of the pyramidal tract is relatively common in multiple system atrophy. The best treatment again here is physical therapy. Uh, the physical therapist can use different strategies. You know, they can use stretching, they can use ultrasound, they can use shock waves. Uh, really they have uh, uh, different uh, things that they can do to really improve the spasticity and the quality of life of, of, of patient. Uh, big, who have spasticity. Uh, oral medications for spasticity uh, are really very helpful in patients with multiple system atrophy because we have to use uh, dose that can cause side effects most of the time, such as you know, if you use baclofen at high dose, it can cause sleepiness, sedation, worsening balance, falls. Uh, however, low dose of medication can sometimes be helpful in, in, in some patients. Again, if uh, you are able to inject a selected group of muscles to relieve the spasticity, uh, botulinum toxin injections can be uh, helpful. Uh, uh, for example, if you have a hand closure secondary to spasticity, you, you may be able to uh, weaken some of the muscle and opening that hand, uh, maybe to gain some function or at least to provide some basic uh, hygiene. 
So in conclusion, as you saw, really a multidisciplinary approach is very important to treat the motor aspects of Parkinson's, of uh, multiple system atrophy, sorry. So it's a, really a combination that uh, a team that involved a neurologist, but also a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, a speech therapist, uh, nursing staff, a social worker, sometimes palliative uh, uh, care team is involved. Sometimes the gastroenterologist uh, can be involved. Um, a trial of uh, levodopa is often warranted uh, to treat the Parkinsonism in patients with MSAP. The treatment of the motor aspect of MSA is symptomatic, uh, meaning that we do not have uh, disease-modifying therapies that would kind of reverse the process or slow down the process uh, of the disease. I want to emphasize the role of physical therapy, uh, speech therapy, and occupational therapy to treat uh, kind of the motor aspects of uh, the disease. And again, it's a combination of uh, non-pharmacological and pharmacological treatments here. Future research will really focus on a disease-modifying approach or disease-modifying therapies to hopefully slow down or change the, the course of the disease. Studies will should also focus on on, on symptomatic management, targeting very specific motor symptoms uh, and non-motor symptoms. We really need better treatment to treat you know, Parkinsonism. Uh, we really need better treatment to treat ataxia. Uh, we need treatment for dysatria and uh, you know, other motor and non-motor symptoms of MSA. And uh, research in other disease, uh, such as you know, Parkinson's disease, for example, uh, may benefit patients with multiple system atrophy and discoveries in these other diseases may actually translate uh, to patients with multiple system atrophy. So I want to thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have any question, uh, I will be at the Q&A session and I look forward to uh, talking to you. Uh, you can email me. My email address in the, is on that slide at guillaume.lamot at hsc.utah.edu. Again, I want to thank the organizer for inviting me to talk about the motor aspects of multiple system atrophy. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference. <laughs>